Welcome to the innovative CompuBike point of sale software tutorial. When you purchased your CompuBike software, it would either come as a download off the internet or on a DVD disc or flash disc. Either way, you click on my computer, choose the location where the software resides on. In this case, it's on an iDrive. Search for the setup file and double click on it. This will begin to install the CompuBite software on your hard drive. Things to remember when installing the CompuBite software. If you already have the .NET framework existing on your computer, it will not install the .NET framework and you continue to install the Crystal reports. When installing the Crystal reports, you will be asked to insert a product key. Please leave that field blank. Continue to install the Crystal reports. When installing Crystal reports, if you encounter an error, ignore this error and continue to install. Once the CompuBite software has been installed on your, on your computer, you will get an icon like this, CompuBite Innovative Point of Sale software icon. You click on this icon and you get to your login screen. You will be asked to insert your operator number and password. For the sake of this tutorial, the, part, the default password is 1234. When the first time you're using the CompuBite software, click on Setup New Installation. You will be asked to insert your level 10 password, which is 1234. You put in 1234, and you will now come to your Setup Company screen. At this screen, you'll see you have a default company and next to it the edit button. We leave the default company as zero, the training company, for the sake of this tutorial. So we click on the default company, zero, and you'll have your training company with your, your address and details. Leave this as is. You'll see at the bottom, you have a 10 digit cost coding. This is your cost coding, starting with zero as E, B is 1, L is 2, etc. You update it and you come back to your setup screen. Once you're at your setup screen, you will be asked of the number of terminals that you will be having. If you're having more than one terminal, you can change the number of terminals here. I'm going to change it to two terminals in this case. I'm going to be using two terminals. The VAT rate is 14%. I leave the VAT rate as 14%. If it's inclusive of VAT, if your invoicing is inclusive of that, you, you tick here and it will make the pricing all inclusive of that. If you do not want to change your selling prices, you can click here and it will not change your selling prices. So the selling prices will be fixed with an excess level of 7. If you want a higher excess level, you can change it to 10 or, or change it to 9, excess code. You got your minimum profit margin, which is 5% with a level access of 7. Your synchronization drive is where your backups are being done. In this case, the backup will be run to a drive called T, so I'll put T there. Then it will ask you where is your cash draw on. You can click on it. If it's connected to LPT1, you can click on LPT1, which is your printer 1, a parallel printer 1, and it will be, be ticked onto LPT1. Choose a pole display. If your pole display is on, you can click it on which COM port your pole display is and you can choose your pole display there. You can also choose the speed at which your CompuBite software will be working. And if you are working in an, in, a, in an environment like a supermarket where you need to not, ex you need to scan the document and immediately process the next item, then you will use these auto accept as one auto accept selling price as one and suppress discount as one you have them all ticked if you are not using a very if you if you do not need to to if you need to insert a unit every time then you can untick it and untick the selling price so it will ask you for the for the units and it will ask you for the selling price when you're inserting your at your point of sale when you're inserting your plu which is your price lookup codes then you get at the bottom of this you get the number of printers you can choose how many printers you've got 
in this case I've got two printers so I'm going to choose two change it to two printers you'll see select printer 1 and select printer 2 printer 1 is an LPT1 printer which is a parallel printer a, a, a slip printer and select printer 2 which is a USB printer I click the USB printer I'm going to print I'm not going to print a logo on a thermal printer because the thermal printer comes with its own logo so I'll click on thermal printer on the LPT1 I'll choose cash sales which I want to print on the LPT1 cash refunds I want to print on the LPT1 account sales I don't want to print on the LPT1 but I want to print on the USB printer which is my laser printer and credit account I want to print on my label printer my labels I want to print on my thermal printer quotations on my thermal printer goods receiving I want to print on my USB printer goods returning I want to print on the USB printer supplier orders I want to print on the USB printer sales orders I want to print on on the on also on on the USB printer receipts I want to print on the thermal printer statements I want to print on the USB printer remittance advices on the USB printer and paid outs on the USB and paid outs on the thermal printer on on the thermal printer so I untick that now I've set this thing now I can choose on printer on what type of stationery that I want the different printers to print on so case sales I want to print on slip printer I'm just going to tick all of them and then untick as I require them account sales credit and account goods receiving goods returning supplier orders I want to print on A4 these I'm going to print all on A4 these are all on A4 I'm going to print my statements remittance advices all on A4 and these I'm going to print all on slip paper this is how you choose your different printers a very important thing to do is to set up the type of store that you have you down click here if you are using a store that has clothing with sizing matrices you choose the sizing field if you are using uh, if you have an electronic store where you do not use sizing or a computer store then you'll choose default no sizing in this case I'm going to use sizing and I'll click sizing if I want a takeaway store I'll choose a takeaway store if it's a spare shop I'll choose spare shops if I have rolls that I sell that's like curtaining or haberdashery then I'll choose the rolls in this case I'm going to choose sizing so I'll choose sizing and I'm going to set it so as you please note if you change the type of the store to the one set up on the installation your, st your stock file will be corrected so if you you must only use this the first time that you're doing the installation you click on it you have already stock items are you sure you want to continue you say yes and it will basically set up your sizing parameter you can further set up more parameters if you want but in this case I'm not going to set up any more parameters I'm if you have a head office in multiple branches then you would basically click on this particular box if, if you're at the head office you click on this company as the head office if you're at the branches you click this company as the branch and you put the number of minutes you're basically going to be sending the data from the branches to the head office you now come back to the login screen at the login screen here you can set up your passwords and operators by clicking on passwords and operators you put your access code in you have level 10 passwords the highest level password is level 10 the lowest level password is level 1 if for instance the programs ask you for a program level 5 password then you will put in a level 5 password but if you do have a level 10 password and if it's asking you for a level 5 password then you can put the level 10 password because it's a higher password and it will still accept it so the higher your password is the higher the password required you would use level 10 so if you're the owner of the business you would choose to have level 7 8 9 and 10 uh, restricted to yourself or to your managers then you have your operators the, the operators are people that will be using your program you have operator number one you put operator number one you put the person's name and the password then you have operator number two you put the person's name and password Salim and password one two three four then you can have operator number three Joseph and the password seven eight six and it's now these are the operators that have been set up on the system 
That's how you set up your different operators. Also very important, if you want to change your company from your training company to your main company, you click change company, you put your password in, one, two, three, four, and now you're at your training company, you can choose which company you want to change. Let's say I want to change company number one, I click on it, I right click on it, I say edit company, I proceed and I put my company details into this particular block. In, okay. And you'll come back to the login screen. You've got your passwords, you've got your reset terminals. Is if the terminal number is you want to change the terminal number to two, then you have to first change your data drive and terminals to change the number of terminals that you have on your network. Remember, if you bought a single user license, the terminals will only be one. If you bought a multi user license, you can go up to four or more terminals, depending on how many licenses you have purchased. Then you've got your network set up if you if you're setting up a network and you've got multiple terminals you would basically add here the drive letter where your data resides in this, if I, the, in this case it will be drive letter P and I put the network path CB term 1 backslash C I can put the username and the password and I click OK and now the terminal in your network setup you basically see your P drive and the terminal number and once you close it, it will automatically map to your P drive. Remember, you set up your network only if you have multiple terminals and you will set up the network on the terminals only, not on the main server. You've now seen the tutorial on how to set up the CompuByte POS software and how to log in. Now I'll just basically show you how you can log in. Now you put your operator number in. Remember we set up three operators. I'll put in operator number three and the password was 786. Put it in and we're now into the computer, into the program. That's your main menu and from here you will choose the various menu items. Thanks for listening to this tutorial.